seven the eighteen. Hey guys, this is Chris with Taylor Welding, and today we're talking about seventy eighteen welding rods. There are, if I had to pick one rod to weld something that I never wanted to move or break or have any chance, I would use a 7018 during the process sometime, somewhere in there. I'd probably run a bead in it first with a 6010, and then I would fill and cap with a 7018 because that is a bad weld. I'm serious. That 6010 will burn all the imperfections out of it and get down, dig way down. And that 7018 will really, really hold it strong. See, 7018 will bend and not break. You know, it, a 6010 is real brittle. So it gives you that real deep penetration and the 7018 gives you that real strong holding power that can bend and move. And it's just, it's really awesome. I actually welded, a, I put little tacks on my welding bed because I'm too lazy to bolt them down. <laughs> so I just get under there and put a little tack that I can grind off real easy. Well, I cut all the tacks except a little piece of one that much and I was picking the whole back of my truck up trying to get it off but I couldn't figure out where it was stuck and it was one little tiny speck of 7018 welding rod these things are awesome they have a tensile strength of 70,000 pounds now there's a ton to talk about and I'm probably going to be all over the place so y'all just hang on <laughs> so if you're just getting started welding you've been welding for a while I'm going to teach you something just about guarantee because I've been welding with these every day forever and I like them because I'm good at them. Uh, a lot of people in the oil and gas industry don't use these much. They do now more and more but when I first got into it it was like they were downhill only and if you can run a 7018 good you were you know you could get a job or you could stay on the job. It's like that. It's like that with all welding. If it gets slow and it's time to start cutting people loose guess who they let go? The guy that can't TIG weld, the guy that can't run a 7018 and then you know what I'm saying they run those guys off first not because they want to and they're not good welders it's just they if you can't do something and somebody else can then they're more valuable you're only worth the value you bring you bring to the company and if you and you're only worth what the market will pay you for doesn't matter how anything nothing else matters except that so learn all these types of welding things i'm trying to teach you um so let's get back to the 7018 i digress all the time <laughs> So this is a 332, this is a 1 8, and this is a 532, and all of them have their place. I suggest starting with a 332. They're easy. They're, they're just easy. They're little. Anytime you're starting something new or you're welding something that you haven't welded before in a weird position, try to stick with a smaller welding rod. It is more forgiving. There's not as much metal there to fall off. You know, and that's a big problem with 7018, especially with beginners, because you go from, you know, stacking, not to be confused with whipping, you know, on the 6010, you go from that to a whole, it's a whole different ball game. Let's say we're going to go up on a piece of pipe, a side of a piece of pipe. I'm going to find something. I'll just do this. I'll do this. I like this. If you're going up the side of something, you're going to, you're going to come over. I'm going to exact. This is the bevel, okay? You're going to come over and hesitate. Now, I'm serious. On your first one, just, just wait. Just get over there and hang out. I'm serious. Just do do do. Just let it burn, 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 burn until you think there's no way this is going to look good. And then go the other side. Whoop. And let it hang out there for a while. Over exaggerate your hangout. <laughs> and then come back. I want you to do this on your first time because you're going to figure out what happens when you do that. I tell people to hesitate and they go, uh, 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 you know, I need you to go over there and really hang out a minute. It will, it will fill up and it, the middle will take care of itself. And then you'll swoop back over and you'll hesitate on that other side and you'll get these real pretty ripples in it. So that's one thing. Uh, let's go 332. This is just an awesome little welding rod. All right. One eighth. Now, if you're going up something with a 1 8, you can do any of these flat. I mean, I if I was going to do something flat, I'd lay this 532 on it. Only reason I wouldn't use something bigger is because it hurts my welding machine. These things take a lot of power to push. But a 1 8 uphill, 
If your plate's thin, you better get back over to that 332 and turn it down because these things carry a lot of heat with them and they take longer to run. At 6010 is fast. This is, this is whatever you're welding is going to be super hot after you get done with these. Same deal with your 1 8th. Go over there and hang out. Hang out. And then, you know, on your cap, you'll have to speed it up a little bit. You, the hanging out's for the filling. I hope I'm not screwing y'all up. When you're filling, you want to hang out a long time. And even if you're, even if you're capping, you're hanging out, but not quite as long. Um, so if you're, if you're filling and capping some thick pipe or thick plate, thicker plate, one eighth is great. If you're trying to put a one eighth cap on a piece of thin wall pipe, it's probably going to look awful because there's nowhere for that heat to go. It's just, it's too much heat in one spot and it'll start puking out these big grapes <laughs> and everybody be looking at you funny. So just go down in the rod and turn it down. That's the biggest turn it down is usually a really good tip for a lot of people. Uh, but you can't go too far down or it won't, you'll get porosity and, and so you got to find that happy medium right before it falls out. You want to be right there. Usually on like a 332, the tip of your rod will be glowing when you're done. When you're done welding, it'll be, you know, it'll be glowing. Just remember that. That's a little tip. Uh, not so much with the one eighths because you can't really get them that hot. If your tip's glowing at one, with a one eighth, you're, there's a good chance, and you're going uphill, there's a good chance you're running a little too hot. Um, and you're going to find out anyway because it's going to be puking all over the place. You'll notice if you don't hang out over here and you just try to go up the middle of it, it'll try to, it'll try to come out at you. It wants to eat as you're coming up the side of that pipe. It'll try to eat into it. That's a hard spot for a lot of people, and you really kind of, it's kind of whatever you got to do to get past that. And if you're out here staying on the edges and not right dead in the center, it'll, it'll probably help you. And this is, you're going to have to listen to this video a few times probably if you're really interested in learning how to do 78 tanks, because there's a lot to know. And of course, the 532 going uphill, I know some welders that can do it. And I'm not saying I can't, but it's not my thing if you've got a well if you got a bevel that big you know something really big i could see it and i saw a guy do a two inch heavy wall ch test with one of these I, I never thought i'd see anybody do that and he did it i'm just saying it's hard and it doesn't look near as good as with a 1 8 and it looks even better with 332 but just know you're giving up time you're, you're giving up your time to use these little rods so try to always lean towards that bigger rod it'll save you some time It'll make, you, it'll make you look better. You know, people are a lot happier when you get 8, 10, 12 welds a day instead of 2 and 3 because you've been welding with 332s all day when you could have grabbed these bigger rods. You're only worth the value you bring. So these are all things you're going to learn. Now, let's talk about, just when I, I thought about it when I laid this rod on this table right here. There's oil and contaminants on the table. If you get some oil on the side of this rod, it is no good. It will cause all kind of problems. Porosity being the main thing. A little bit of grease, porosity. Uh, if, you, if your rod's got a big chip on the edge of it and you just fire up and start welding, you're going to have porosity in your starts. That's the biggest problem with 7018s is porosity. Uh, that's, I don't even like saying the word because that stuff haunted me one time big, big time. I had a problem with my welding machine and it was porosity from top to bottom and it would not come to the surface. It was in the middle. And it was driving me crazy, you know. So I don't want y'all to have any of that. So if you know your rods are clean and you're doing good and you've been doing good and you hadn't had any price and you're starting to, go check out your heat box, especially if you got a Vantage. Because it was, I mean, I changed everything and I was still having problems. Changed my heat box, went away, hadn't seen it since. So other things that will cause porosity, wind. Wind will cause probably it'll blow this flux is like water on top of it and it'll blow blow it off and it'll blow some porosity in there. And that happens to all of us. So if you ever hear of a welder getting a repair and it's porosity with 7018, he could be the best welder on earth. I mean, and have that happen. It happens to all of us every now and then. 
what happens is after you've been doing it for 20 years, you'll know the environment, you'll know, hey, I'm likely to have it. Let me touch it with a grinder and see if it's in that start. You know, you'll, you'll do some little preventive, preventative measure, you know, you'll take some precaution. What else can I say about 7018? These is, there's so much to say about them because I'll think of something as soon as I get done making this video. Uh, hey, you can take a piece of electrical tape and poke it through there and it will seal that off or it won't get aground and hand it to your welder and he'll beat the crap out of that thing trying to get it going. <laughs> That's a little trick for you. Yeah, don't tell him I told you that. Okay, oh, the next thing. I know the next thing. A rod heater. Now every little welding inspector is going to tell you these have to be 300 degrees or you got to throw them away or you got to put them back in the oven because they're, they need, to, don't listen to that. I have welded so much pipe. I mean I've welded more pipe than most people have walked by with old welding rods. I guarantee you this rod's got rust in it right now. I use them every day. I'll show it to you. You see those that rust? Little brown specks? They all have it in them. Especially the old ones. <laughs> and they burn fine. They burn so good. A 7018, I think, will last forever. I've never had a bad one. You know, I, you don't leave them in the rain, but the, the flux is different. It's actually got uh, metal in it. It will stick to a magnet. Uh, I didn't know if y'all knew that. Uh, this flux, if you break it off, will stick to a magnet. It's got metal in it. And, yeah, don't put your rods in a rod oven, man. All it does is make the, the, the flux brittle, and then it will chip off. There's absolutely no reason to, and I've had welders inspectors tell me this crap. I've had to, I've had to keep my rods in a rod heater knowing it didn't do a dang bit of good because I've welded thousands of welds with old rods. I mean old, too. <laughs> so it doesn't seem like you can screw this up uh, with using an old rod. Now, those 6010s and uh, 70 plus, 8010s, those downhill rods, they get moisture in them and they go to pop. They, I mean, it is no good. But you just about can't mess up with an old rod that's been out of the oven. Now, I'm sure some welding inspectors are just going to have a field day and come up with all kind of crazy reasons why that's not possible. And I've been doing it successfully for 20 years. But anyway, I digress. So, man, I think that's about it on 7018. They are an awesome welding rod. There's a ton of good things about them. But if you're in a, a, a hairy environment with some thin metal and the wind's blowing, or you got grease or mud or something, that's not a good spot. One more thing. Ooh, this is a good tip. Now, when you're welding and you have a, it's kind of domed and it'll kind of, that, that slag will want to hang around the edges of your weld. If your weld's not slick, it won't just fall off. So if, you, if you're welding along and you got a little something, a little nook or something, there's some slag in there. You've got to get down to it. You don't have to get it all the way out. I mean, you don't, but if you, you can either break it up and get it a crunchy dust and then it'll pull it out. But if you just mow over it, it's going to be there. And, and you could stay on it and kind of push and that'll dig it out, but then your weld looks ugly. So just know if you got a little divot or something and there's some slag hanging in it, hit it with a grinder just to where you can get to it. If it's not real big, it'll pull it out. Or you can just get it all the way out. You know, use your own discretion. You'll figure all this out. And I, I can't remember the last time I had a bad x-ray on slag. Uh, it's hard to tell because x-ray can only see what they can see. And if they see something, it doesn't matter what it is, they got to call it. It could be a piece of mud in the pipe. It could be, you know, they've called slag on, on stuff that I know better, you know, I was right on dead on top with the 532 running so hot, nothing could be in there. But it's okay, that's part of it, you know what I mean? So, and, and, I, and what I do, everything is x-rayed. B31 through Severe was half of my career, and it's been 1104 lately. 
and uh, just know you can do it. You can do it. You, you can do this so easy. I, I, somebody send me some comments if they're welding and trying and they're getting anything out of this because I really want to encourage you guys to burn these things, trade it for some fiat currency, get you some silver, and we'll go to the Bahamas. <laughs> I hope y'all have an awesome day. This is Chris with Taylor Welding. Check out my other channel. It's called Financial Fitness. I'll put a link in the description below. And if y'all have a desire to hold some of this precious metals, I'll put the link to SD Bullion in the description below as well. Y'all have a great day. Later.